What is going on, guys? And welcome to episode 17 of the Listen Whilst You Step podcast. Today, we have a very special guest on. We have Anna Moon. And I met Anna, well, God, we met in the inner circle stuff. We met actually in person back in November in Dubai. Anna is literally just a bundle of joy and energy. <laughs> and uh, she's an absolutely incredible coach in her own right. Um, absolutely crushing it with her business. And I'm sure we'll touch on that at some point. But Anna, I'm just going to hand it over to you to do a little introduction about yourself, kind of how you got into the industry and who is Anna? Hi. Um, so yeah, I'm Anna. So I guess like the the main thing um, that got me into the fitness industry was a moon fit. So my Instagram page that I recently deleted. Um, I, I got into the fitness industry through that. Really, I think I was always sort of watching girls on Instagram like training, and I was like, oh my God, like I really want a booty. So yeah, I just I started training, um, and then I found a love for it. So did my personal training qualification, um, got into training people into the gym and then like Simon just fell into uh, online coaching. So yeah, I think that was, that's certainly the the biggest start of my fitness journey. Yeah. How, how, how long were you PTing for and stuff? Um, I was PTing in the gym for about two years. Um, I actually started in my home. So um, I actually created a gym in my garage, um, which was quite cool, actually, because it meant that people could sort of <laughs> pay a little bit less. Um, yeah, and I loved it. I did it part time alongside uh, an accountancy job. Um, and then once I left that, I decided to go into a gym, which is which is good. Um, but as you know, it's, it's a little bit different to online coaching. So, yeah, that was the sort of route that I went down. But I do miss that little home gym. It was really good. <laughs> uh, literally home gyms for life. Anyone who's got a home gym now is just laughing. At me. Yeah, I know. I really I wish I had a squat rack, I had cables, everything. And I'm like, why have I not got that now? <laughs> I, I look back and I generally don't think I could PT out a normal gym. So no, it's, it's, it's difficult PTing like, with the, everybody watching you as well. And it, like, I remember PTing in the summer and it was a bodybuilding gym that I was, I was coaching in um, where I still train now, but there was no air con. And I was literally like over my clients, like dripping with sweat because it was just so hot. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, this is awful. <laughs> Yeah, suck, suck that my, my biggest thing would be like all right today yeah we've got some squats ah oh, shit squat racks taken yeah the biggest yeah. thing that would do my head in yeah Can and if, if someone was like one and a half six session i was like i was like we're gonna have to do cat wells or something because you're not gonna <laughs> get on anything but yeah i think that was the hardest thing as well in a gym where it's so busy um we had our gym it, the music was so loud i was like four more reps like shouting to the clients because they couldn't hear anything i love it i love it um so Obviously, you mentioned the kind of motivation to building your social media page was kind of seeing all these other girls. Did you ever think it would kick off like it did? No, no, never, actually. I was like, oh, do you know what? I was like, I'm just going to, maybe I'll post something fitness. And it, the day it changed was the day that changed it from A Moon to A Moon Fit. Um, and then it stuck. Um, but I just, no, I started posting pictures because... I went through a massive change in my own fitness journey. Like my body changed. Um, I got a coach. Body, uh, body recomposition was just mad. And um, yeah, it just creeped up from there like extremely quickly. Mm. What was the specific things that you think helped it kind of move on and progress? I think I started an Instagram page at the right time. So a couple of years ago, the algorithm wasn't so squeezed <laughs> um by so many people using the platform and it was easier to grow like i'll always admit that it, it was easier to grow um but i think now if you were going to try and down venture down there it's just impossible isn't it so i'm still there trying to build mine <laughs> okay, same, same on my second page <laughs> yeah. but just to clear that up guys what, how, how many followers did you end up at um i had mm. two hundred and forty-five thousand. wow yeah. that's crazy that sounds weird what, yeah <laughs> what what kind of opportunity did that open up so many. It, I think it, it eventually, essentially it got me where I am today um, in ways. It like the biggest change for me was confidence. Um, I, I was really sort of self uh, like insecure. I didn't really have body confidence. And I think that's something that it's just such a common trend in women nowadays. Like they just don't have that. But it gave me the opportunity for people to actually sort of like appreciate my journey um, and, and sort of like feel the influence. And when people were just telling you that what you were doing was motivating them helping them you were like yeah i want to do this some more like yeah this this feels really really good yeah you realize you're doing something with a bigger purpose than just you 
yeah and it, it was just mad and it, like the opportunities that I got like photo shoots I got to work with incredible brands I met so many people like Ben Mark like literally like now one of my best mates I met him because I did a photo shoot because of my Instagram um I've flown abroad like yeah just now work with my proteins there's so some incredible opportunities um I met some great friends from there that I've still got now um but then also some yeah not not so good things as well <laughs> yeah I've got I've actually got Ben coming on I think it's next week I'm recording an episode with him oh yeah you'll be there for hours <laughs> yeah I, got, I did a, I did a live with him the other day and we were literally laughing about his terrible dad jokes and just saying oh, <laughs> I know I better, I better block out a bit more time for the podcast with him um <laughs> obviously you mentioned that there was some I think everyone does look at social media and they look at someone who's got a large following they think it's all just kind of sunshine and rainbows we both know it's not yeah. Do you mind touching on some of the kind of drawbacks? No, absolutely yeah. not. So yeah, I think that was the biggest thing in, in like initially in letting it go over the, the last sort of month because people have such this this image in their head that like the more numbers, the better. And I think like we both know from the business we're in that people think that relates to everything. Um, but people would often see that following and be like, oh, you must have it easy. You must have it all. Like it must be so easy for you to get clients. It must be easy for you to make money and everything like that. And unfortunately what people don't realize is that instagram page doesn't always roll in your favor so i've had to explain myself so many times that actually i just decided to delete it in the fact that i had an 85 percent male following that uh, were not even uh, from a country that i spoke their language so for me obviously the struggles um the, the indecent images uh the abuse that you would get from people that would like and it do you know what it's incredibly hurtful uh especially as a woman like we are a bit sensitive <laughs> although i'm all bubbly on the outside like things things do hurt when you when you try and you put a lot of effort into things and people sort of like tear you down for nothing like your your form's a little bit off or you're you're doing something wrong and it, it just sort of took its toll because i think where it's such a big male following um it was so it becomes so difficult to reach out to the women that i really wanted to reach to and it it's just so many struggles that, that so many times you get wrapped up in the engagement, the likes, the story views, and whether you want to be wrapped up in those things or not, like you can't help it because you've committed four years of your life to posting every single day on a platform. Um, and then it's sort of almost gone wrong. Um, yeah. And it, it, it was, it was such a big struggle for my mental health. It was unbelievable. Uh, and I didn't even see it happening. It just, it just sort of happened. It's one of those things you probably just get caught up and all of a sudden, bam. Oh, you do, yeah. And and the worst thing is that you look at all those influencers, you're like, oh my God, I want to live that life and live the best life. Most of them struggle with mental health more than the everyday person because I can tell you now from, from speaking to so many girls on there, they're worried about their engagement, they don't feel good enough, they're editing their images, they, they're worried about their story views. And it actually, it just constantly gets them down. And I think, and that's why I like push so strongly now. I'm like, you don't actually want it because like if that's what you're basing your life off because you've got like a 200k following it's pretty sad really because it like it's just made me realize it. it just doesn't make you happy that number does not give you what you want it to give you and it just people won't realize until they have it i don't think until they yeah. understand it i think it, people get that kind of shiny ob object syndrome and yeah. they think it's all glamorous but when in the reality like yes it has opened up a hell of a lot of opportunities you've oh, seen, yeah. seen a lot of cool people cool. from it but would you say that risk and kind of reward kind of thing, do, do they pay off? It, it depends. Do you know what? If you get an Instagram following with an amazing, um, like if I had an Instagram following with amazing female following um, that were really engaging, then of course it would make me feel good. But I think, do you know what? Even if you had exactly what you wanted, I still know people with half a million followers that are actually really unhappy because it doesn't give them what they want it to. And they're constantly like, you do constantly compare yourself to other influencers. Why are they getting more likes than me? What am I doing wrong? And that will always be in your head. And, and just, I don't care what anyone says. There's just no way that those things could not impact you in that way. Like, and you can see it like with the mental health of a lot of like famous people and how much they get affected by that social media and, and the comments that people leave them. Like they're just, trolls are just, it's just disgusting it's crazy it's um is there any kind of like support for like people who are seen as influencers or is it just you can no, have that no way no nothing at all like you you would not and the worst thing is about it is i think a lot of them live in fear because with a click of their fingers someone could hack that account and their life would be gone and for me the biggest thing was like right well actually 
like what do I want here like I want to help women on a one-to-one basis and I want to directly hit them women without people constantly coming in the side and trying to push me off track um and I thought to myself if someone deleted this page and I didn't have anything else how would I feel so that's why I decided to create um a community that's smaller um with the the people that I want to help uh no offense like I don't mind helping guys but <laughs> The ones in the, that have the right the right thoughts. Um, and, your passion. It's, yeah. not where your, it's not where your passion lines. No, that's that's exactly it. Yeah, and I, I think that yeah, you have no support. And do you know what the worst thing is about it? Nobody understands unless they do it. People are like, oh, you're so bold about Instagram. It's like, mate, <laughs> if it was you, you would care. But it's almost like a bit of a jealousy factor that does come from people as well, which constantly pushes hindrances your way. It's difficult. Yeah, massively. I think the amazing thing is like um, people forget that, yes, you might have a following, but it doesn't mean that you necessarily make a good living off of it. At the end of the day, oh. followers really don't pay the bills. No, no way. Like, uh, you, like, where was it? Probably about a year and a half ago. My Instagram following is about 180K. Um, and do you know what the worst thing is? that? So most of these influencers now earn money off ads, which is so false because... And I was doing it. I fell into the trap of it. It's like, oh, I want to help women, but I'm just going to push out every single ad that comes my way because I'm desperate for a bit of money. And like, I'll just openly admit that because I'm a very honest person. But you would just accept ads, and like, I would do who have I done ads for? Like Holland and Barrett, fifteen hundred pound for a picture. Um, and then you just end up promoting things that you don't even believe in, you've never even heard of. And that's the problem now. Is you look on some people's feeds, it's like ad, 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 and they earn thousands and i mean thousands but they're unhappy and do you know what the worst thing is they could earn five grand in one month the next month if they get no ads they earn nothing like it, it's it's not sustainable um and there was a point where i sort of wanted to fall out of that so i, I pushed it away and if you don't do ads you don't earn any money like i wasn't i wasn't and there was a point where i was in my overdraft and everyone was like you're living the life and i was like I'm fucking skin like <laughs> I was like I'm just gonna have to fake it till I make it and like there was a point where I wanted to do a photo shoot with Ben and I didn't even have 200 pounds to to give to him and and it's it's just crazy now I've shifted my goals that how much things have changed and how much nicer it is now we're in the inner circle and you're crushing yeah we're in the inner circle yeah, yeah. yeah. and and now I've pushed my focus into a smaller page and actually just helping women yeah. it's just so much better for for mental health everything business I think it's I think we I think I remember us having a conversation saying that your engagement with your trained banner page, which was at like 2000, 2500 at the time, and your A Moon Fit one yes. had the same engagement. Yeah, yeah. And that's the worst thing about Instagram. So it's all run off algorithm. So when people want to grow, they'll do a lot of like hashtagging and things like that. But unfortunately, that's what I did and it attracted the wrong people. Like it attracted these all these weird men. Um <laughs> and I just got this hot like so at one point I was growing by 10k a week. It was just insane yeah and I never used a bot I never did anything like that it just grew and and I was obviously in the moment when I was a bit younger I was like oh this is sick I'm gonna be fucking insta famous but what I didn't realize is I was getting all these weird people um and where the algorithms changed I used to have like 12,000 story views on there um and at one point just before I got rid of it I ended up with about 1500 so when people think they look from the outside they're like oh she must be able to get clients so easily must be able to make money really easy not at all. Like, it's just, it's so like, don't judge a book by its cover because you have absolutely no idea what goes on behind that page. Like, no idea. Absolutely. It's it's one thing to have a following. It's another thing knowing how to leverage it. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you can grow a following in the correct, um, like, yeah, in the correct your, way. Your niche, yeah. As the well. right audience. Yeah, which is difficult, but mm. it can happen. I do know girls that have got it and they, they smash life because of it. But there's not a lot of people that can do it at all. And do you know what? It's nothing to do with you. And that's the problem with Instagram is you think it's always you. You think it's your fault. It's an algorithm. It's how they decide to do it. And it's, do you know what? It's potluck. It really is. Like, it's, it's potluck if you're one of those photos, hits the explore page, loads of people see it and you're off and it's away. And that is just how it works. It really is. Yeah. I know like we, we even have conversations, some of the guys in the inner circle and things, and it's like, oh my, my algorithm's down today and then the next day it'll be like oh my story views are through the roof and it's just literally potluck like you say it's just yeah it is yeah it is and it's like I think 
a couple of years ago you could probably a lot e grow an instagram page a lot easier but now this it's the ones that they don't want you to uh, they don't want you to reach out because there's so many people in the app that it's probably pretty much impossible to reach the people that you want to easily um like we know it is difficult to to reach the audience but we know now that it's how you use your audience and how you help your audience not how many you've got for sure there's a there's a book called a thousand true fans have you ever read that no i haven't actually That's definitely definitely worth one it basically says if you can have a thousand true fans you'll be a millionaire yeah i believe that You're i right do that. i believe that in, and you know what it, it feels so liberating like do you know what? i just i feel like on top of the world and i'm like yeah let it go and everyone's like what and i'm like it's just a bunch of pictures with a load of weird men followers. Like, like if you just think logically, yeah. it is like, what, what are you going to be on Instagram when you're 65? Like, what do you do? I'm an influencer. You're not going to be an influencer. <laughs> how long is that going to last for? And how much is that going to damage your mental health before you realise that you, it's the wrong thing to do? Like, yeah, you could be a fashion influencer and that's all the girls want to do. It's basically no work for nothing, like for something. And it's like, it's all great. You look fantastic and they make, they make a lot of money these these fashion girls but you can't do that forever like you, you like and doing things like that sometimes it's like for me the life goal is to actually help people like genuinely not to say in my bio here to help women and push every ad in the century like realistically you need to be you need to be a realist to these women as well if you actually want them to buy into you being a fan I think uh, I think a lot of people are starting to see through the, the fake ads and things like that, that now, which yeah. is awesome because it's starting to see people clue on to things. But there is still stuff that obviously slips through the cracks. But it'd be interesting to know, do you think the people who make it most like most successful build a follow, build a business and build a following because of that? Or do you think the people who are most successful build a following and then build a business off the back? Oh, build a following and then build a business. There are... So, and that's another thing that is frustrating about the fitness industry is that that is one of the reasons I wanted to step away from it. Cause it's almost like people were convinced that I would be a shit coach because I had a following that I didn't care. People, when I miss people back, they were like, oh, you're missing me back. And I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking human. I'm not going to ignore you. Like I was sometimes like, you know, it's like you, you get a load of messages for story replies and you do miss some messages and you're, you're the worst person in the world. But most of the time, like I would always try and reply to people cause I'm human, but People just think that you're out to grab money because you've got following because these girls, they build fitness pages by putting videos up with their asses in front of it and it, it's all in good. And then they're like, oh, I've got a new app. And it's like the only reason that they're doing that. And half of them aren't even qualified person trainers. They have no care. I was literally going to say. <laughs> Honestly, some of them, then, and I'm like, are you qualified to be doing this? Like, it's just... It's just out of this world. But but girls will, unfortunately, like someone would much rather buy, like, no offence, the Courtney Black app than probably sign up with a coach who's got 2,000 followers because she's Courtney Black and or he, she's whoever, whoever it may be. Like, she's a fantastic woman and she's doing a great job. But, for example, she's more favourable because everybody's doing it. And it, it's one of those things that if everybody's got it, you want it. Rather than potentially probably just investing in someone that will give you that one-to-one -one support and actually wants to help you directly like people will just this yeah there's so many girls out there that aren't qualified courtney's not one of them by the way just it was the first person that was in my head she's doing a great job but i um yeah but you know what i mean like there are women out there that do have millions of followers um and then they start something just to well just people, absolutely, absolutely rake it in. yeah of course yeah. people go and do sign up for three months and go what the fuck is this and then they end up coming to a real coach on that, yeah. it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be an interesting thing. So, if you if you were looking for a coach now, what yeah. would be your top three tips looking for a coach? What for a like, client? You, yeah, yeah. Because you've got a coach yourself. I've got a coach myself. Coach, yeah. I believe everyone should have a coach personally. Yeah, I do. I, I've had I've had coaches for years. Like it just, uh, but I've mental coach, um, like fitness coach, business coach, uh, every type of coach because actually it's not the fact that you're not good enough it's just the fact that you want to do more you want to learn more um my my advice i think what what would i say that you're looking for i would my first bit of advice would be sit and watch don't jump into something i think a lot of people could sort of just follow a page jump in message them oh, i'm gonna buy that app i'm gonna do that straight away sit and watch make sure you actually like that person one are they relatable 
do they actually have the same beliefs as you? Because if you're oh, like it's all well and good, all these bodybuilders that look absolutely sick and these girls that look absolutely shredded, but is this guy that you sign up with going to chuck you 900 calories and starve you to death and then tell you he's doing a shit job because you've no. not done it? <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then put you on kombucha. <laughs> yeah, and then put you on and put you on some drugs just to make you even skinnier. So make sure they align with your goals for sure. Make sure they're relatable for you. Um, and my third bit of advice, if you're looking for a coach, make sure you're ready for it. Make sure that you actually can invest yourself. Yeah, obviously it's a cost financially, but you waste the same money on fucking Nando's and Tesco's beauty treatments every month. Yep. <laughs> uh, but And McDonald's. But yeah, make sure that you're ready to invest in yourself. Like it does take commitment, doesn't it? It does take commitment and it does take a bit of time, but it's so worth it because you just change your life, don't you? Like every coach I've had is just taking me to a new level, mentally, physically, everything. I think if you have if you have the wrong coach, it has a big detriment to you. Oh, and- of course, yeah. And I, that's why I say always sit back and watch. Like a, a lot of the girls that message me, like, oh, I've been following you for a while. And I'm like, good, because you want them to you want them to, to buy into you. Like you, your coaches, you want to pick someone that you can relate to rather than just being like, oh, they're famous. Let me go with them. It's like you don't even know who they are, really. Like you, you haven't taken the time to research your coach and make sure that they, they fit for you. Yeah testimonials is my big one yeah testimonials. Legit, legit legitimate testimonials like not just i think if you, if you, yeah, anyone can yeah, write a testimonial, write a testimonial yeah. oh so and so from around the corner this is what she said fuck off yeah exactly <laughs> and, and maybe like obviously transformation pictures are great but have a little look at how they train their people like i've seen some coaches be like oh like do this do this like whatever and it's like you're training them like two three times a day for like fucking 20 days in a row and it's like you know, like is this going to be manageable for you and are you actually going to be able to achieve what that coach gives like for me like just making sure that every client gets what they need is the most important thing but you're not going to be a right fit for everybody like you're some some girls will be better suited to you some will be better suited to me and that's why you should just spend the time researching and sitting and watching <laughs> actually, ask ask freaking questions tell the coach you want to speak to them yeah yeah definitely ask. yeah if you don't speak i i don't know I don't know, yeah, how you can speak to someone and, and sign up. Personally, <laughs> like, I don't know. You need to speak to somebody to know that they're going to be able to work with you and they're not going to steal your money. <laughs> Literally. Um, okay, just kind of wrapping up, just a few last things then. What would you, what would your top, like, what's the three best things about social media? Um, the three best things about social media. So I would say, like, looking at even like my clients, um, starting fitness pages is the support that you can get from other people so you can meet people anywhere across the world and they can just give you support and it's such a good network for that because especially this time of like right now in like this current situation you can meet people that you wouldn't have the chance to and you can get support from people that maybe wouldn't support you normally like a fitness journey is individual um and you do need that support um oh i don't know what other things do i think I think one one for me is there it is a massive opportunity, but you've just got to learn to do it in the right way and do it for the right reasons. Yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. When it I guess actually, yeah, if we stop thinking about clients and it comes down to like business wise, business wise, it's free advertisement. It's it's a it's a it's a hub where you can share everything that you want in one place that actually will help people. And then obviously, like if you're talking about business wise, not everybody listening to this is going to be a client. It's, yeah, like, it's an amazing opportunity, but use it wisely. Don't don't get caught up in just having a number because it won't get you where you need to be. So, but yeah, it can be a, such a powerful tool, social media, Absolutely. definitely. Absolutely. One more, go on, what's another good thing? I'm putting this on you. Oh, finding all good cooking <laughs> recipes. Yes, oh my God, some of the recipes <laughs> I found on social also, media. Do you know the, the best thing about uh, the Instagram, Slimming World Girls? The food is unbelievable. If you do not follow Slimming World Girls, go and follow them. <laughs> I saw your um, I saw your bagel fins like done as pizza the other day, and I've so I saved the post. Like I've got to do that. That was my <laughs> client. It wasn't even me. It? They just oh. come up with some genius stuff. Yeah, like but I follow my Instagram feed is just like Slimming World Girl, Slimming World Girl, because the food they make is honest. <laughs> um. Okay, and we'll just we'll do one each on this. What's the worst thing about social media? Oh, the worst thing about social media, comparison. Yeah. For sure. There's got to be, if you, it, mentally, if you're not 
quite in the right place um the comparison of women i see it a lot women to women just comparing themselves constantly but just remember that if that is you it's just a highlight someone can edit that photo of a click of their finger can edit their bodies you know nothing about that person so you just you just as much as i say just don't do it you must learn to not do it yeah That, that was going to be my exact same thing. Was it? Oh, yeah, yeah, literally. Great minds think alike there. There we go. <laughs> um, reason being is like, all credit to Ben, he's an amazing photographer. I'll never forget doing my first photo shoot with him and he took a photo and he turned the camera and I was like, that's not me. <laughs> it's yeah. amazing. Like, you forget like a lot of these like big influencers. Like, they, they're, they're working with incredible photographers. They know their angles. They've got a turn. Oh, my God. Like, yeah. <laughs> like you said, it is, it is that whole highlight thing and that's what you've just got to remember. And that's what I think it's cool to see a lot more people starting to share the kind of real deal. Yeah. Um, I, oh, also, yeah. I also think there's a lot of people just playing on that as well. But uh, yeah, just, this, is, just yeah how works, this is one it? of the problems that there, there now will be a lot of girls on social media like, bloated i'm like mate you're not bloated you've probably just seen a poo like that is not <laughs> bloat like come on like yeah. That. but yeah now girls will you want to see bloated oh <laughs> you yeah, you're bloated i'll show you bloated um it's just like that's the problem again is that women we're it's like these women are clever you don't realize these these fitness influencers are clever they will catch on to whatever trends instagram has trends like but for me the biggest thing is that actually i didn't want to see that so do you know what i just don't follow it my little page, I just, I follow like-minded people, I follow my clients, and do you know what, I, I, you create your own hub and your own space on Instagram, and that's what you should do, like, if you're sitting and looking at your Instagram, and someone's making you feel shit, unfollow immediately, don't look at things that make you feel crap, it's just not, like, life's too short, don't do it. <laughs> your, your willpower's a muscle as well, let's not waste that willpower muscle on fucking useless shite. Yeah, and you, you're just, you're almost like forcing yourself to feel shit, like I have this this thing where I don't actually, once I finish work, I don't look at my phone, Um, I, I put it, turn it off, I put it in my bedroom, because the worst time to scroll is at like half eight at night, because you're a bit lethargic, maybe you've had a tough day, and then you're just like purposely triggering yourself with crap, like obviously you go on to mine and Simon's pages, look at our transformations, <laughs> And then, then take yourself so, to bed. So, <laughs> so, so, soaking our content, it's super yeah, useful. Yeah, soaking our useful content, and then take yourself to bed feeling like a, a strong person. <laughs> but yeah, I would definitely say like just avoid anything that makes you feel shit. Like it doesn't mean that you're pushing it to the back of your head. It's just that why would you look at something that doesn't actually influence your life in a positive way? So yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. Love that. Right, last one. I want three tips just for people to absolutely fucking crush their fitness journey in 2021. Oh, okay, right, hold on. Here we go. Co- <laughs> Co- Coach Anna, let's go. I know, I'm really feeling the pressure now. Um, oh, well, I, put, I, I put Anna on the spot with every single one of these questions. I never tell anyone the questions before I start it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so three things to make you absolutely crush your fitness journey. Stop being so fucking hard on yourself. So I think that one thing is so many women are like, I've got to do like this, 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 this yoga, this meditation, this, this to get in shape. No, you fucking haven't. Calorie deficit, move. Those two things. Stick to the basics. Um, Be truthful with what you're eating. I think would definitely be a big one for me. So some people are like, oh, I track at 1400, but I'm stuffing the dominoes at the weekend. Okay, well, track a little bit more. Be honest with yourself. Stop kidding yourself. Uh, and my third one would be sign up with Trainer Anna. There it is. <laughs> love it, love it, love it, love it. Awesome. It's interesting. Um, steps. Steps, steps, steps. Step, step. We had a conversation step, step, step. about this. Step. Step, step is the game changer. More Boy, I'm on 15,000 15, now. Watch me go. Oh, you think you're beating me today. Damn oh, it. not today. I mean, oh, daily. Thank God for that. I'm on 10,129. What you on? 12. Oh, 12104. Since I started, your that one message you sent to me and you said, get out and do your steps every morning. Since that day, I've done my steps every single morning. It's game changer, isn't it? It is, yeah. And now I'm on 10K and it's three o'clock. So come at exactly. me, bro. Tick, ticked <laughs> off for the day. Anything else is icing on top of the cake? Yeah. Um, honestly, I just want to say a massive thank you for coming on. And do you want to just let everyone know where they can find you, where they can find Trainer Banner and everything like that? Yeah. Um, so yeah, on Instagram, train with Anna. That is it. Come and find me. Show me some love. Uh, and thank you so much for having me. It's really good. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm sure we'll do another one in the future at some point. So, so. Thank, 
<laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Please make sure you give it a screenshot, share onto your Instagram story, tag uh, me, Simon Johnson Fitness, and then train Devana. And we'll see you in the next episode.